Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. From Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you a true story from the life of William Harvey, starring Herbert Marshall on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And here is our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Tonight, a remarkable true story transcribed from the life of a 17th century doctor. His name was William Harvey, and he performed one of the most courageous operations in the history of medicine. It involved a dying king and a battle. And we welcome back as our star, a dear friend, Herbert Marshall. Now, here is Frank Goss. As the Christmas season approaches, one of the most enjoyable prospects is the sending of Hallmark Christmas cards to be chosen with pleasure and mailed with pride. For in Hallmark cards of any price, you'll find the inherent quality and craftsmanship you want in your personal greeting to your friends. And the familiar hallmark and crown on the back of the card shows, too, that you care enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Athena in color, and starring Jane Powell, Edmund Purdom, Debbie Reynolds, and Vic Damone. And now with Herbert Marshall as William Harvey, Mr. Barrymore brings you the Hallmark Hall of Fame. <laughs> As a young medical student of London, William Harvey attended Cambridge. Later, he sought further education in Italy at Padua University. It was there that he began his studies of the heart. He was taught, as were all students, that the blood within the human body ebbed and flowed as the changing tides. Unlike the other students, however, he did not accept this theory. Eventually, William Harvey became an outstanding physician, but his real interest was constant, the human heart. All the days of my life before this moment are rewarded now. Success has crowned my experiments. For surely what applies to the animals in my laboratory is also true of man. So I start this journey with the prayer of God grant me enough years to establish my discoveries, and with the hope that the learned men of our day will see fit to recognize the fruits of my labor. <laughs> this morning, walking here to the laboratory, I thought to myself how to bring a sunny chuckle to Dr. Stansbury's otherwise drab face. <laughs> Dr. Stansbury, my day is complete. <laughs> Dr. Harvey, Yes? Valves. Valves. Oh, the things you must have learned in Padua. Surely as a doctor you know better than... L listen to me. Yes? I offer you this section of excise vein. I accept it. I point out to you here. 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 The length of it. Small flaps of tissue. Valves. Yes, for indeed they are. Oh. Nature is provident, doctor. Agreed. Oh, yes, yes, agreed. Is provident and has reason. Therefore... Nature would not place so many vowels in this vein, nor in every other vein I've ever dissected, beast or human. Therefore, you say... I say the valves and the veins allow the blood to travel only one way, toward the heart. It then follows that the blood must be carried from the heart by the arteries. The suggestion, Doctor. What? When you have your portrait painted for the College of Physicians, I suggest the pose of the forefinger pressed against the temple, for that is a deep pose. And what you have told me here is deep indeed. Oh, give me your arm. As long as I am between you and the case of dissecting instruments, Doctor. Oh, give it to me, give it to me. Yes. I press my finger on this vein and draw it along its length and push out the blood. See how the vein remains empty of blood until... 
until I remove my finger. Such a neat trick. My grandson, who I suspect practices black magic when his mother's not about, will welcome it. Uh, uh. Dr. Harvey? I am he. Uh, not me. You can be sure of that. This scroll to be delivered to Dr. Harvey all haste from His Majesty King Charles I. The king. Open it, open it. Well? What? What does it say? It is a summons. From the king. Having heard, he says, having heard... Give it to me. Having heard that you are knowledgeable in medicines and surgery, together with certain theories which may prove profitable in the saving of lives, I hereby command you to appear... has to do with the circulation of the blood, sire. I see. That the blood is carried from the heart by arteries and to the heart by veins. Then the heart is a pump. Exactly. And not the liver, as has been said for hundreds of years. Fourteen hundred years, Your Majesty. Our theory has not changed. It was the Greek physician Galen who... Yes, passed yes, it. yes, but other things trouble me. Uh, come, let us sit here. Physician... There's a reason why I have chosen this, a garden, for our meeting. My relation with you should not be made stark by protocol. I do not understand, Your Majesty. Uh, that group of roses there is no more beautiful for your king than for yourself. Therefore, before it, we are equals. But you are... Sovereign of England, yes. And you will keep me so. I? As my physician. For I have heard you are the most skilled in the realm. Well, I am deeply honored. But do not let the honor replace the skill. Be honored for the moment and forget about it. Yes, sire. Physician? Yes, sire? In much of England, I am despised. Cromwell says I have usurped the powers of Parliament. What do you say to that? That politics have no interest for me. But yours is a dedicated life. To my laboratory and my theory, yes, Your Majesty. Which is well, for I am vulnerable, physician. How? To you. Though I am sovereign flesh, when I am ill, it will be up to you to cure me or not to cure me. According to my politics, sire? Well? Suddenly, sire, I am no longer honored. Suddenly for you, my skill has fled. I ask your pardon, Dr. Harvey. I, I must be sure. I ask humbly that you be physician to me in peace. And now there is strife in the north in war. Agreed? Your Majesty. My hand on it. There. And now you are a king's man. King's man. Here. Master Harvey, physician to the sovereign. King's man. Who are you? John Maitland, Lord of Dunnock. I offer you felicitations. I welcome you as a king's man. How did you know my name? How do you know that... Oh, soon you'll learn the ways of the court. Oh? Huh? King Charles has but to think a thought and the whole court knows it. It's a kind of alchemy. Therefore, all about you is known. And so I welcome you. My thanks to you. Then we may walk? By all means. There is war in the north, Dr. Harvey. Yes. There's dying. As in all wars. And the king goes to the north and to the war. To lead his soldiers. Therefore, therefore what? He could die, Dr. Harvey. There is danger of it, surely. What if it were certain? What? No, nothing, nothing at all. You see there, look, in the oak tree, a blue finch. Pretty bird. <laughs> This will protect you from the rain. Yes. Oh, this war. A sea of blood will roll before they take our king's head from him. Uh, Master Harvey. Dr. Kilgore, yes, what is it? Don't need it. The man grievously hurt. Soldier, uh, hold the cloth tightly. And I will come back and see to you. Yes. Come then, Dr. Kilgore, show me the wounded. Oh, uh, yeah. He's dead. 
Not even your foolish theories can save him. Perhaps not. Nor save any soldiers. Yours are thought for the laboratory and offer flesh and blood. Oh, yes, I know your operations with the animals. But animals are not humans, Dr. Harvey. Let me remind you. Since I have so far been unable to test my theories in practice, you need not remind me, Dr. Kilgore. And to the good of me, we'll try. No more of this. Wait. Uh, what is... There. Another has fallen. Quickly. Help me. Help me. It's the king. My physician, bring him to me. Get Master Harvey. I am here, sire. I was walking when I... What is it to me, Master Harvey? You are grievously hurt, sire. His death is on me. Yet you will heal me. A stray shot has lodged next to your heart. Yet... You will heal me. The lead which lodged in the king's breast was of the size of the final thumb joint and lay next to the heart. It is disposed in such a manner in the great vein as to be likened to a, to a cork which prevents the great rush of blood. Truly death is upon our king. Yet he has charged me to save his life. It is a vexing time. In just a moment, we'll bring you the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. You know, November is one of my favorite months. I like the tang in the air when you step out in the morning the cozy evenings at home, the thoughts of Thanksgiving, and the happy holidays ahead. And November is the perfect time, you know, to plan for those holidays. Now is the time, for instance, to go to one of the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards. Now, before the Christmas shopping rush begins, you can sit down comfortably and look leisurely at the new Hallmark Christmas card albums. You're sure to find just the card you want to order in printed with your name. Believe me, all the beauty, the warmth, the color of Christmas will pass before your eyes on the pages of the Hallmark albums. Be sure to see the new Hallmark Slim Jim cards. They're stylishly slim, elegantly tall. There are also the Hallmark cards featuring the designs of the Associated American Artists. And new designs by those famous Hallmark artists, Grandma Moses, Norman Rockwell, and Steinberg. But you can't go wrong whichever design you choose in a Hallmark Christmas card album. Your card is sure to be distinctive, memorable, and appealing. And it's sure to have that familiar hallmark and crown on the back that's always there when you care enough to send the very best. And now with Herbert Marshall as our star, Lionel Barrymore brings you the second act of our true story from the life of William Harvey. England in the 17th century was a time of internal strife. Prince Charles had more than his share of enemies, and the period was marked by outbursts of violence between the various factions. And so, to be a king's man, indeed to be the king's doctor, was a precarious living at best. Suspected by the king's friends and hated by the king's enemies, William Harvey nonetheless fulfilled his role with courage and dignity. The memory of it will be recorded in my journal. To recall how on the battlefield from which the crow had fled, and the raven and the starling, where lay the wounded anatomies of soldiers. There was now another dying. Of Charles I, King of England, who wept his miseries into the ravaged earth. We lifted him, Dr. Kilgore and I, and where the king had fallen, there was scarlet dew on the heather. We carried him to his tent, and there I attended him till he slept. Then I went back to my own tent and for a long while watched the spinning stars and heard the far-off sound of night battle. And then, from far, a rider. Uh, 
Master Harvey? Yes. John Maitland, Lord of Dunnock at your service. Do you remember me? Yes, Your Lordship. This day I've ridden from England. In this night I have heard of the misfortune of our king. His hurt is most grave. How grave? The shot blocks up an artery. If I remove the shot, the king will bleed to death. I see. Doctor. Yes? They say that if the king wished it, the war could be stopped in a moment. He is sovereign, therefore he can do many... The Scots want peace. How would you know? Take my word for it, physician. The Scots want peace. Have you heard a Scotsman say it? In those words. A Scotsman, not a prisoner of war. The truth of it is, physician, that the Scotsman I heard say he wished for peace is highly placed. And he awaits the English king's pleasure. Or at his death. His death? That the war would be over. Then you are truly an emissary from the enemy. No, I'm an Englishman tired of slaughter and mad warring. Why do you come to me? You're the king's physician. Yes. I've heard that when the fever subsides, you will attempt to remove the shot that injures the king. On the morning next. Let him die. What? To stop a war, let the king die, physician. What madness oh, do you... consider it. Physician to a king, and you hold his death in the very fingers of your hand. I will not hear it. Charles lies wounded, as a deer lies wounded in his forest. That which you have cut open and held the heart and let life pump out of it. And it becomes murder. No, not murder. Peace. And Charles is the enemy of peace. He is a man, a human being. King and enemy who sets himself above the parliaments of his people. I tell you this. Where Charles the lowliest soldier, where Charles table boy, where he a monger hawking wares from a gutter stall, still I will try to save him. With your leave, I must now attend the wounded. Poultice to the wound, Your Majesty, and it will ease the hurt and hold the flow. Uh, but a small hurt compared to... Permit me to see it also, Kilgore, what uh, healing you do for our king. There is no need of you, Harvey. I am competent. Let him see it. It will be gentle, Majesty, quite gentle. It will not do this poultice. Take it, burn it. Mm. You hear him, Kilgore? You hear your colleague in the matter of a king's wound? Take your poultice, he says. <laughs> Our king's life, and you mock my medicine, Harvey. As I shall mock all medicine that is distilled of witch's brew. That is cloth of pollution filled with withered herbs. And yours, Harvey, skilled in the manner of slaughtering the doe and the fawn of my forest for your laboratory. What your prescription? What I have said to you. To cut me open, to remove the shot. To experiment upon a king. Uh, Your Majesty, need I remind you, this physician's methods are untried. All theories are no fact. To perform surgery on a deer is one thing, but to experiment on uh, a king... Me still, physician of the poultice. What say you to this, Harvey? Will I die of this? Most surely you will bleed to death, Your Majesty. All medical knowledge proves it. Sire... There is a matter I have studied, of arteries from the heart, and of veins to the heart. And I believe, perhaps I have found a way. I have pondered it. A simple question, physician, the dying to the living will, I bleed to death. He has said it himself, Your Majesty. How if he removes the well, shot? Well, physician, answer me. There is the possibility, sire. Possibility? A drowning of the lungs, a strangulation, and, and the pig cutter says possibility. Harvey? Yes, sire. When would you do it? In the morning, when the fever is gone. In the morning, then. Go what your knife, physician, make it sharp. But leave me now. Leave me. Seize him. Seize him. Uh, what manner of violence? This manner, Master Harvey, that these men of my choosing do now seize and hold you. I, I will call to the guard. And if you do, they will choke the tongue from your mouth as easily as the rooster's crow. Show him. Uh, uh, now, my pistol. If your eye to beget a silence. Uh, release him. 
You mean to kill me then? First to bargain again. Let the king die. Kill me. While we waited for you, we opened a chest of your belongings. There were papers in it. My notes. My experiments. Papers of a learned man. Physicians' treatise upon the flow and secret of life. How many years of scribbling, physician? Of experiment, of fatigue, of nights without sleep. How many years? The years of my life. Bring one to me, Harry. <laughs> Here, Your Lordship. Now hold it to the light of the torch that the physician may read the title of his work. Read it. Of the heart and of its blood. Yeah, how many years? The years of my youth. Put torch to it, Harry. Burn it. No. Then you, Roger, hold up another paper so that the physician may read. Read it. Exercises in the matter of birth. How many years? I do not know. I beg you, do not. My entire life, invaluable knowledge. Burn it, burn it. Now, all of them, Harry, burn the physician's life. Put to flame the years of his youth and the years he cannot remember. Burn them. Destroy them. No, no. My life. No, and you, Roger, smash the vessels and the retorts and the cylinders of glass. <coughs> what say you now, Master Harvey? I shall operate upon the king. And I shall use whatever skill and knowledge I possess to save his life. I am sworn a physician. And a physician I shall be until I die. Bravo. Bravo. Well said, Master Harvey. Kilgore. Oh, forgive the intrusion, gentlemen. I came but to see Master Harvey. Who is he? Oh, but a number of physicians, gentlemen. By chance, I overheard your words to Dr. Harvey. And so I bring a thimble of advice. What advice? The notes you burned are worthless. The ravings of a fool. And as to the operation on His Royal Highness, do not prevent it. Plead for him to perform it. Thus will you serve your purpose. Is this true, physician? Ask Master Harvey. It is truth the operation has never been performed before. And there is grave danger to it. Thus speaks the king's physician. Harry, Roger, come. We are done here. My work destroyed. But you have saved my life. My pleasure, Master Harvey. I wonder if you will do as much for the king. <laughs> Is it morning, then? Yes, sire. I did sleep, Master Harvey. I think for a while I slept and for a while dreamed. The fever, is it? It is low. It does not burn my hand as before. Your hand on my brow. There is no trembling in it. It is the time, then? Yes. I will prepare the instruments. Master Harvey. Yes, sire. You will heal me. Lie still. Lie very still. Cut deep, surgeon, and cut fast. And quickly remove the death that lies against my heart. I made the cut upon the flesh of a king. And I removed the shot that blocked the artery. It bled profusely, life flowing from it. And I tied it, as I once had done on the artery of a form. The bleeding stopped, as I knew it would from my studies. And Charles lived. The yesterdays burned in wantonness, and the tomorrows remain. But I will begin a new journal to set down all the tomorrows of my life till death, final death, comes to me again. Success, 
Cromwell's men had succeeded in destroying William Harvey's writings. His immortal de motu cordis, which means the motion of the heart, was the only book to escape the flames, and it became the guiding star for future generations of physicians in their study of the human circulatory system. The success of the operation on King Charles was enough to change 1,400 years in the history of medicine and pave the way for our modern heart specialists. Now, here's Frank Goss. Mr. Barry Moore and Mr. Marshall will return in just a moment. In the current issue of Coronet Magazine, there's a very interesting article entitled, Christmas Starts on a Sunday in November This Year. It explains that this year, in a rebirth of religious spirit, Americans will observe more fully than ever the Holy Advent season, the days before Christmas. Now, there are many old world customs of observing the Advent season, but the best love tradition is the sending of Advent cards in November. And this year, the article announces, Hallmark cards are bringing this cherished custom to America for the first time. Actually, each Hallmark Advent card is 24 cards in one. For these Advent cards contain 24 little flaps to be lifted up one a day from December 1st until Christmas Eve. Each little lift up reveals a new scene or verse. Some reveal, day by day, the story of the Savior's birth. Others show pictures of Merry Christmas customs. These Hallmark Advent cards cost just 50 cents or a dollar. You'll want them for youngsters, for Sunday school classes, and families. But remember, Hallmark Advent cards are mailed in November. So be sure to look now for these beautiful new Hallmark Advent cards at the fine stores where Hallmark cards are featured. And now, here is Lionel Barrymore. You know, Bart, it took a lot of courage for William Harvey to use King Charles as his royal guinea pig. Yes, Lionel. <laughs> and you seem to have an uncanny knack of finding important and significant incidents from people's lives which make remarkably fine drama for your Hallmark Hall of Fame. Well, thanks, Bart. And next week is no exception. Tonight's story was about a 17th century physician... For contrast, next week we're going to present a true story about a 19th century lady doctor, Rebecca Lee Dorsey. It's also a little known incident in her dramatic battle to win acceptance as a physician. And as our star, that great lady of the American theater, Miss Helen Hayes. Wonderful, Arnold. Helen Hayes is Rebecca Lee Dorsey. Sounds like worthwhile listening. Indeed it will be, Bart. Thanks for joining us this Sunday, and until next week then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. <laughs> for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Our producer director is William Prude. Our transcribed script by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. Featured in our cast were Polly Bear, Joseph Kearns, Herb Butterfield, Ben Wright, and Whitfield Connor. Herbert Marshall can currently be seen in the Universal International picture The Black Shield of Falworth. Next week, the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television will present a dramatic incident from the life of America's second president, John Adams. Second president, John Adams. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you until next week at the same time when you'll hear a true story from the life of Dr. Rebecca Dorsey starring Miss Helen Hayes on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network.